One of the most useful formulas that you come across in calculus is probably the one that figures out the arc length of a curve. And in this example, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use that formula to figure out the length of the following function, 3 fifths x to the 5 thirds minus 3 fourths x to the 1 third plus 5, and we're going to take it from x equals 1 all the way up to 27. Now, in case you have forgotten that formula, let's go ahead and write it down so we can see all of the parts that we'll need. So in the formula, you end up taking the integral from a to b. And these are usually the points of, you know, where you want that curve to start and stop. So in our case, this will be the 1 in 27. Then we have the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function. All of that is being squared, dx. So one of the biggest challenges that we come across when using this formula is taking our function, looking at its derivative, then being able to square it, and hopefully have some solution or being able to do something when it's underneath that square root. You'll see that this one will have to go through quite a few ho hoops to do that, but in, in the end, it'll be okay. All right, so let's get started. One of the first things that I like to do when working with this arc length formula is to take the function and start working on finding its derivative. The reason is, is because in the formula, you know, that derivative piece sits underneath the square root, so I need to find it anyway. Uh, it's also easier to work with it outside of the integral. Uh, that way you can work with manipulating it, simplifying it, before you ever putting it in. All right, so starting off with the derivative, I can take these powers, put them down. So this will be 5 thirds x. Now I need to reduce it by 1, so 2 thirds. Do the same thing with this other term, bring down the power. Reduce it by 1, negative 2 thirds. And the derivative of a 5 is just 0. So a little bit we can simplify, but unfortunately not a whole lot. Get these fractions that cancel each other out. So x to the 2 thirds. And it looks like we get some 3's that cancel out. So minus 1 fourth x to the negative 2 thirds. Alright, so that is pretty good, but that's not everything that's underneath my square root. What's really underneath the square root is 1 plus the derivative then the entire derivative is squared. So let's put those pieces in and see if we can work with this a little bit more. So 1. Now let's put in that derivative we've just found. So x to the 2 thirds minus a 1 fourth x to the negative 2 thirds. All of that squared. Okay. So this part will live underneath that square root and we want to work to hopefully simplify it as much as possible. Hmm, that's going to take quite a bit of work. Uh, one thing I can do is maybe square this out, see what terms can combine. So imagine foiling this. Here would be the term. And I'm going to write it out one more time just so I can see my first terms, outside terms, inside and last. All right, first terms, x to the 2 thirds and another x to the 2 thirds, so x to the 4 thirds. My outside terms will multiply, so minus 1 fourth, x to the 2 thirds, x to the negative 2 thirds. Inside terms will be exactly the same, so 1 fourth x to the 2 thirds, x to the negative 2 thirds, and my last terms, negative times a negative, will be a positive 1 16th x to the negative 4 thirds. All right, that looks like quite a mess, but actually we're getting some nice things in here that will simplify. First, look at these coefficients, or look at the exponents on the x. Since they have the same base and we combine them, that'll be just x to the 0.
Now, of course, that is really great because when you take x and you raise it to the zero power, you simply get 1. So here I have 1 times a negative 1 fourth, and there's another 1 multiplied by a negative 1 fourth. So minus a quarter, minus a quarter. Now I can finally see some terms that will definitely combine. So my 1 can combine with both of these uh, quarters. Now that will leave me with a positive 1 half when all set is done. Alright, now this does look pretty good. It looks like we've simplified it as much as possible. Uh, but remember, this part will get into the square root. So we want to continue working with this and hopefully turn it into something that uh, the square root can then simplify further with. One interesting thing that you can do with this thing is actually factor it. It may not look like uh, it factors in an obvious way, but watch how I can kind of go back through my steps and reverse them and it'll lead us to what this factors into. So as I start reversing my steps, I'm going to split up that positive one half into a positive quarter and another positive quarter. All right. Now I'm going to put in some more x's. I'm going to put in x to the two-thirds and x to the negative two-thirds. You'll recognize that those are the same x's that were in there and that normally we just combined them and made them one. So in this case I'm reintroducing them back in. Really I'm just doing that so I can see uh, how this will factor a little bit easier. Alright, now this will be a little bit more obvious. Here's our first terms, outside terms, inside terms, and last terms to the following two uh, binomials. So here's x to the two-thirds. That'll be my first guys. Then my last terms, a one-fourth, x to the negative two-thirds, and a one-fourth, x to the negative two-thirds. Both of these are positive. So yeah, that is actually what we had before. The only difference is now these are positive on the inside. And they're exactly the same. So I can write this as x to the two-thirds plus a one-quarter x to the negative two-thirds, all of it squared. Now that's going to be really great to put underneath my square root because of this square. The two things will cancel out and my integral, integral will be nice and easy to compute. Let's go ahead and put this in, see what we get. So in the original problem we're going to take it from 1 to 27. The 1 plus the derivative of the function squared, we've already been working with that for a long time. So we'll put that guy in. and our dx. So this is where we'll start on our integral. Very first thing that you want to see is that we don't have to worry about the square or now the square root. Uh, this will leave us with just an x to the two-thirds plus a one-fourth x to the negative two-thirds. Now there's a nice integral. All right, now we just take the antiderivative and plug in our bounds. All right, starting off with the antiderivative, we want to add one to the power, then divide by that new power. So here I have x to the five-thirds now, all being divided by three-fifths. 
Let's see, add one to a negative two-thirds. This will give us x to the one-third. Then when we divide by a one-third, that's the same as multiplying by three. So a three-fourths out front. Again, going from 27 to one. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's plug in our top bound and then our bottom bound. So three-fifths, 27, five-thirds, plus three-fourths, 27 to the one-third. Okay, so there's our top bound, minus three-fifths, one, five-thirds, plus three-fourths, one, one-third. All right, things are looking pretty good. Let's see where we can simplify this. So starting with the 27 to the 5 thirds, this will reduce to 243. 27 to the 1 third, well that guy is just a 3. Not too bad. On to the second pair of brackets. Well, 1 to the 5 thirds and 1 to the 1 thirds, both those guys are just 1. So here's my 3 fifths. And here's my three-fourths. Hmm, looks like we better start combining fractions. So I'm going to multiply my three and the two forty-three together. Seven twenty-nine. Plus, uh, multiply my threes. Nine-fourths. It looks like if we're going to have to go any farther, we better get some common denominators in here. And a good candidate for that, uh, probably 20. Let's see, if 20 is my common denominator, this will be 2,916 all over 20, plus 45 all over 20, minus, let's see, times 5 times 4, uh, 12 twentieths, 15 twentieths. Alright, now all we have to do is combine the tops of each of these fractions, and we are almost there. Combine the guys on the left, and the guys on the right. Alright, looking pretty good. Subtracting the tops. Almost done. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce it by dividing the top and bottom by 2. Alright, I think that's about as far as we can go. Uh, since 2 and 5 are the only things that are divisible, or that go into 10, and neither of those would go into 1467. So at this point, we can stop, and this represents the arc length from 1 until 27.